Fiber is the non-digestible portion of the plant foods that we eat. Fiber has so many roles and provides so many different benefits for our body in terms of cardiovascular health. Fiber can help lower our cholesterol by drawing it out of the body. Fiber is also really important in keeping us regular in terms of bowel movements. It can also help with blood sugar control for those who may have diabetes and then it's really amazing for cancer prevention. It's also really important for our gut microbiome. So fiber is a really kind of diverse uh, umbrella term for all of those non-digestible portions of the plant. Uh, when we think of the two different types of fibers, right, insoluble fiber is often like what is in the, the skin of a fruit or uh, the peel or the husks or the seeds. Um, whereas the soluble fiber is more of like the interior of the food. So there's no meat in apples, but you know, saying the meat of, it's like the meat of the apples and the interior section is where a lot of that soluble fiber resides. In soluble fiber, you can kind of think of like the outside structure of a plant, a little bit more rough in texture, or a little bit more stocky, a little bit more stringy. And that kind of acts as a broom into our intestine to kind of clear everything out. So if you eat a bunch of kale, you eat a bunch of celery, eat a bunch of greens, that can kind of like clear you out internally. Whereas soluble fiber can absorb water a little bit more and that kind of adds bulk to our stool. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about things like cardiovascular health as well, that is what binds to cholesterol and draws it out of the body. Mm -hmm. And that's also why sometimes cooking, it just makes it easier to digest as well because some of those, those really tough structures are softer and they're more broken down, which can make it easier for us to also chew it well, which can also help digestion too. So there's not a really strong way to even know, like especially food labeling wise, that won't break out soluble versus insoluble. Both have different, different and complementary important functions in digestion and cardiac health, weight management, cancer risk reduction, etc. So ideally we're getting both in our diets. And then for certain conditions, one is sometimes a little bit better than the other, depending on the person, which is why health is all relative. Yeah. What's helpful for someone may not be helpful for someone else. So for example, if you're having diarrhea, having a lot of insoluble fiber, that fiber that acts like a broom in your intestine to clear you all out, we don't want that when you're having diarrhea. Your diarrhea is doing that for you. So yeah. then in that situation, maybe eating a bunch of kale wouldn't be so helpful for you. But something like apples, the meat, the flesh of the apple that acts to kind of bring water into the stool and bulk it up, that maybe that's a fiber that would be better suited for someone who did have diarrhea because it adds bulk to the stool and of just getting everything out. Fiber plays both a local and systemic roles in cancer risk reduction. By meaning local, especially when we think about colorectal cancer, having a diet that is much richer in fiber as all of your food contents pass through the GI tract, the higher fiber can actually help to decrease the risk of cancer formation in the colon and rectum. As far as systemic benefits go, some of our fibers actually ferment in our large intestine and create different products that are beneficial to our health, like short chain fatty acids. Having more of these in our blood circulation is associated with lowering some cancer risks. Also, any of the fiber rich foods that we would want to be eating are also known to help decrease cancer risk. Some of the mechanisms are well understood, some aren't yet understood, but if you have a higher fiber diet overall, you're gonna have lower cancer risks. Another reason is because we can think about direct exposure. So skin cancer, more of a carcinogen might be the sun because the sun is getting direct exposure to the skin. Our GI tracts get direct exposure to our nutrition and to our food. So the foods that we eat, like Ray said, the ones that have properties that decrease our risk of cancer and have extra phytochemicals in them, like fruits, like vegetables, like whole grains, our GI tract and gastrointestinal tract getting exposed to those can help limit our risk of cancer and reduce it. Whereas other foods that may not be as high in fiber, that direct exposure to it could also help in could potentially increase our risk of uh, colorectal cancer. We're talking about things like red meat, processed meat. In terms of specific types of fiber for helping to lower colorectal cancer risk, ideally we're going to have a very diverse diet where we're getting fiber coming from all types of edible plants. So fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans and lentils, 
nuts and seeds and even our herbs and spices. You know, the diversity is believed to be a major thing in decreasing cancer risk, the synergy from different nutrients from one food to another. Something that is important to highlight though, there is research evidence that diets rich in whole grains can decrease the risk of colorectal cancer. And this is a really important thing too. It's been over 20 years to my recollection now that all of these low carbohydrate and now grain-free diets have been very popular. And that's actually not really good sound medical advice. It wouldn't be good to just be eating a bunch of white bread every day, but that's not a whole grain, that's a refined version. But things like having some oatmeal in the morning, having some quinoa or bulgur wheat with a lunch or a dinner, these whole grains really do have power to lower that colorectal cancer risk. And it's important that people are aware of these as healthy and protective foods and not considering non-evidence-based information that tells us that these are not good foods for us. My favorite way to get in fiber would be through berries and then also through winter squash, butternut squash, acorn squash, and then also sweet potatoes. But yeah, really just you know, including fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, etc. with each meal. Um, if we really wanted a specific food recommendation, I would say the oatmeal with flax seeds in the morning. Just as I continue on in middle age, this really just kind of helps keep the plumbing going well. As far as supplemental fiber recommendations, there's not really anything that we can offer as an across the board recommendation. Different types of supplemental fiber products can have different effects. Some can be more of a laxative type effect, which may be what's desired, whereas others can even have some type of a constipating type effect, um, which may be desired or may not. So when choosing a fiber supplement, the most important thing is speaking with a health professional about what is your specific reason you're looking for it, and then the right type of fiber supplement to help correct that. When adding fiber in your diet, go slow. You can learn the hard way. Um, if you want to do that own self-experiment, you go right ahead and you do it. Kind of like Ray mentioned earlier, fiber can cause um, extra GI changes in terms of diarrhea or constipation. And increasing too quickly if you're feeling constipated can also induce extra constipation. Just be careful. The symptoms of too little fiber can also happen with too much fiber if you go too quickly. When we think about fiber and its benefits to our digestive health, uh, one very hot topic in health and nutrition right now is the gut microbiome. And often people may take a wrong approach to try to support their microbiome. They're thinking, I need lots of probiotics. I need to add all these probiotic supplements. Um, so probiotics, that's the actual living bacteria we want in our guts for best GI health. Uh, but more important than supplementing with probiotics is eating plenty of prebiotics. Prebiotics are the food for those healthy bacteria and prebiotics exist in all different types of dietary fiber. Um, so the best way is again having that diverse diet that will really feed your gut microbiome well and that yeah if you're thinking about gut health you'd be better served to ensure that you're eating fruits and vegetables regularly um, versus taking probiotic supplements. And I think that probably most types of soluble fiber will have some degree of prebiotic activity. A few things have been noted definitely to have really good prebiotic activity. Um, onions and garlic are part of that. Um, bananas are another one that has good prebiotic activity. And then there's also ways to create more resistant starch or prebiotics depending on the way you cook it and how it's cooled. Yeah, potatoes are another one that when we cook a potato and then if it's fully cooked and allowed to cool back, um, that creates a more prebiotic type of resistant starch. Yeah, so that's something that's like a good sort of hack if you're at a barbecue and you feel like there's really nothing that's really health healthy there. You know, the potato salad is actually probably a really good option there because it's got cooled cooked potatoes. Do that, have some coleslaw, and you actually have a good amount of fiber alongside the barbecue meal.